Hi, so today in this video I'm actually um, going to set up myself a new home assistant install um, and set it up on my old Raspberry Pi because I moved away from that and onto a PC but I thought I'd start a new one just for filming that. Um, you can see it's just currently preparing itself. So I, I flash the Home Assistant operating system onto an SD card, I put it into my Raspberry Pi, I plugged my Raspberry Pi into the network and booted it up. And then when I connect to the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, um, you can probably use Home Assistant.local if you've only got one of them, but because I've got two, I've got to be specific. Port 8123, and it's starting to prepare the uh, user interface. So I'm just going to pause the video that now and I'll come back once it's actually started to, to boot up and we can start setting up um, give TCP and uh, obviously Predbat. Okay, my install's just about ready. So I can type in my name and my username and set up a password. and then create my account. Um, give it a name of my installation and you don't have to set your location obviously, it only really works, only really does things for certain um, location based services. Um, let's see. Make sure my time zone is correct. Um, temperature, pounds, etc. Okay. You can put some analytics on if you want. It doesn't really affect the systems if you do or you don't. Then it's going to detect, detect some of your local devices that you might be able to see. Here it can see my Apple TV, it can see a Bluetooth. Um, IB can trackers are like um, some of these. Um, what do you call it? Bluetooth tracking devices and you can set up new integrations. I'm just going to finish at this point and I get to the empty home assistant installation. Okay, just move that video out of the way so we can see the settings button here. So if I go to settings, add-ons, it says you don't have any add-ons yet. Click here to get started. I can search for add-ons for home assistant. First thing I'm going to add is the file editor because that's quite useful. You want to be able to edit configuration files, etc. So I'll install that. <coughs> Hopefully it won't take too long. Good. So it's installed now. I've got start on boot on. I can turn on the watchdog so it be starts with crashing and I'm going to start it up. And that's my um, file editor. The other thing I want to do is show it in the sidebar, so I shall do that now. And now it, my file editor shows up here, and when I open it, I can browse the file system. Notice my main configuration.yaml is at the top here, and automation.yaml. There isn't much else in here at the moment because it's a blank system. Configuration.yaml is pretty empty as well. We might need that later. Okay, we're in settings add on, so I've got my file app browser there. I'm going to um, go and add some new add-ons now. So I'll go to the add-on store and what I want to do is add give TCP. So if I go to the give TCP web page, you can find this by googling it, then you can see the instructions are add this repository to the home assistant. So I can copy this repository and then I shall go and add custom repositories, put it in there, add. Right, that's there now. So hopefully, I might have to go back out again. So it's saying enable advanced mode in your user profile page. Let me go back to here. Maybe you need to keep me logged in this time. And let's see if I can find advanced mode. Advanced mode, unlock advanced features. Yeah, we want that. 
Um, you can always have a play around here. There's some other things that you can customize, etc. Hopefully that's done the trick now. Give TCP, there we go, that's better. So if we click on that, we're going to install Give TCP. Well, that's in, so that's installed now, but we need to install an MQTT broker, it says such as Mosquito. So let's go ahead and do that now. So settings, add-ons, let's see if it's in here. Mosquito is already in the add-on store list, yep. Let's go and install that one as well. Okay, so that's installed. I need to have a look at the configuration page on here. And I think this is all set up by default to be okay. Um, you don't, it says you don't need to create a special user because you can use Home Assistant users already. Um, So that should be that. So if I go back and start it, let's see if it will start okay. Can have a look at the log here maybe. And you can see it's starting up. Okay. That seems to be running. Let me return the watchdog on as well in case it crashes. Um, that looks all good. So I'm going to go back to Give TCP now, and I actually need to configure Give TCP. So to do that, I'm going to need to know my inverter IP address. <clears throat> so what you can do is open up your app. And I've just screenshotted it here. You can go into your local monitoring settings. I've actually set mine to a fixed IP address, but when you scan for your inverter, it will also tell you. So mine ends in 020. So I can fill it in here now. 020, I've only got one inverter. It's not an all-in-one. Um, and it is old firmware, actually. It's only if you updated recently or you've got the newer generation, you need new firmware. So I'm now going to need to know my um, host name or IP address for my MQTT broker, which I'm going to need to fill in here. So that is this machine itself because it's running on here. Um, so if I read the guidance here, you could put homeassistant.local here if you've actually only got one home assistant. I'm just going to put the IP address in for now of this machine. The username and password so it says you should create a username from the people section so let's go and do that so if i go settings people users and then i should add a user and i'm gonna go i'm gonna call it mqtt and you should probably set the password to something more secure but you're going to set it to only log in for local network and administrator so it can't be used from the outside I create an MQTT user. So now if I go back to my add-ins and I configure this again, I can click my IP address again. It obviously hasn't saved that from before. Um, which means I didn't save my inverter IP address either, which was number 20. And then I'm going to call the username MQTT and the password is MQTT because I didn't set it to anything very secure. Log level info is quite good. Self run time, I don't go below 15 seconds, it tends to um, cause it to have a denial of service attack. I'm going to bump it up to 30 because I've got another instance running. If you want to set up dynamic tariff, you can set it up here. If you're using Fedbat, this isn't important. Influx databases, if you want to store it to a separate database, I'm going to skip this for now. I'm going to put my IP address in here as well. It would have been okay with homeassistant.local for most people. 
data smooth and medium. This is all to do with um, the smart target. So if you're using PrevBat, again, it doesn't really matter. And I shall save that. Now then, we should give give TCP a start. And then we'll see what it's doing. It's probably going to take a little while to start up. Something's happening. Okay, so I just changed this to Home Assistant 2.local. It should have been Home Assistant local for standard setup, but I've changed mine to number two and, and saved and everything's restarted and now it's working. So you can see it's found my inverter as I IP20, it said it's a Gen 1 hybrid, which is correct. Um, and now it should start publishing the um, discovery messages to um, MQTT. So um, hopefully that's going to spring to life fairly shortly. We shall um, see how it gets on. Sometimes it can take a little while. Um, notice in developers tools, you could also see state information here. And this you can scroll through what's actually available in the system in terms of entities. Give TCP doesn't seem to be there yet, so I'll, I'll give it a while. Okay, so it looks like I missed a step. We need to go to settings, um, devices and services, integration, find MQTT, hit configure, and then configure it through Mosquito Broker. So that should be done. Now we've got five devices and give TCP starting to add in all the things. So the problem wasn't the name versus the IP address. It was that I hadn't added that. So this is starting to look good now. And you can see all the give TCP entities appearing. This is probably time where you want to take control of your dashboard because this is going to get crazy otherwise. So if we go edit dashboard, start with an empty dashboard, take control. Now we can add some new cards and we can start with some entities. So maybe we call it give TCs, TCP and maybe we want to search for things like the, um, the battery SOC. Um, so actually you'll notice there's two sets of entries, SA and DF. So I think DF is the battery and SA is the inverter. Um, so you might have to have a look around and find the, um, <coughs> the right one because the inverter back percentage is going to be something slightly different from the actual um, battery itself because of the way that GiveTCP keeps margins, etc. You can see all the options here that you're getting. So I've added a few entities onto here, including the right one with the SA power GiveTCP SOC, and I can save that onto my card. And so now I can see my home battery percentage. It's not got any history on it yet. <clears throat> so uh, obviously the history is going to build up over time as the system runs and it's very new, so there isn't any history. Um, so there's a few other steps I, I can do now um, before I can install PredBat, but I can't actually get PredBat to work properly until I've got at least 24 hours worth of data. But there's a few other things, so I can have a look around for the add-ons. And I can see if I can find hacks. Maybe it's not in the add-on store. Maybe it's in the devices. Nope. So maybe I need to find hacks home assistant and then click on the download button. And it's going to say that I actually need to try it with the customer repository by the looks of it. Um, or using the Hacks download script. So we're going to have to do some uh, weird setup here. I'm going to go to the add-on store. I'm going to download terminal SSH, which allows me to run commands. So I'm going to install this now. Uh, this is quite a useful one. 
Okay, let's turn this on Watchdog, show it in the sidebar and get it started. And when this starts, it's going to give me a terminal. And when I click terminal, I have to, oh, not quite ready yet. Let's go back to the add-ons. So what's going on here? Is it working? SSH ports disabled. Is it working now or not? Yeah, it just took a little while to start. Okay. So let's try and copy this command and see if it works, shall we? Copy, terminal. It's uh, not going to work, is it? Copy paste is going to be funny here. Bash minus W get zero. W. Okay, so I type the command in the right, hit the button, let's see if it works. I mean, I remember to restart Home Assistant before you configure it. So, system, restart, restart Home Assistant. There we go. Hold. Okay, we've just restarted. So, settings, device. Design services, add integration. Nope, that's not the ones. Um, I need to go to add on store. Add integration hack, sorry. So I can check, put the click boxes on hacks and submit. And then copy this key here into GitHub, paste it into there. Authorize hacks. And they're all set with hacks. In the next video, I will do the Octopus integration and set up app daemon and start installing Fredbats.